Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. In this video we will be uh, continuing with the return keyword from uh, whence we from uh, when we left for the method lecture. Uh, and hopefully uh, this lecture will clarify what the return keyword serves as inshallah. And before we begin بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وارض اللهم عنا معهم أجمعين اللهم آمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد <coughs> We begin in the name of Allah the most merciful in this life and in the hereafter and we thank him for all of his blessings that he has bestowed upon us for they are innumerable and we pray that we follow in the footsteps of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his fellow companions Amen we also ask for prayers and blessings to be bestowed upon Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him and his family as they were bestowed upon uh, Prophet Ibrahim peace be upon him and his family Amen now let us discuss the return keyword before we uh, discuss it in the IDE let us uh, visualize the uh, mechanics of the return keyword I have designed <clears throat> a flowchart here for a, an extremely simple program but to remind you of the method that we used in the previous lecture I will return here briefly we have the add number uh, method that collects uh, two parameters number one and number two and adds them together after it adds them it returns the sum then I will invoke the method by simply typing its name and because I have two unknown parameters undefined parameters I as the user define them as arguments by I define the parameters by passing arguments that is the correct terminology for the process passing uh, an argument well in this scenario two arguments so I will abide by the diagram here 5 and 10 so I will create two variables this is unnecessary of course you can simply say 5 and 10 like so but because I wish to demonstrate clearly how a return function, uh, uh, um, how the return keyword functions, I would like to use those two variables. And yes, you can pass variables as arguments, whether they are primitive data of the primitive data type or the um, reference data type. And we can cover passing objects as uh, arguments later on, inshallah. So we can say A and 10 or A and B. And as you can see, once you use a variable, the color turns from gray to white to indicate uh, its usage. Uh, so uh, the result is ignored here. We will see why shortly. Let us return to the flowchart. Here we have the terminal stop, start and stop. Then we have the declaration, or I should say assignment, because it is performed in one step as opposed to two steps for variable A and variable B of data type int. Then we enter the, uh, uh, let, me, let me see if I can zoom in. Then we enter the variables or pass them as arguments to the add number method or in this scenario module. Then after that, we want to print the sum that is returned from here. This is one flow. This is one stream. Once it ent once the program flow enters this location or this domain, the stream branches into a parallel stream. However, it is abstracted here in this square 
or in this rectangle I should be uh, uh, to be more precise a rectangle the rectangle saves you the trouble of identifying what took place in this method basically it saves you the trouble of knowing this part of the code hence why it is abstracted here but let us see what happens when the stream branches into here before it merges back into the main stream so what we can do is start here this is where the module starts or the method starts um, a and b 5 and 10 so let us draw the program flow for this portion only so the main branch or the main stream is this once it reaches here the flow or the control of the program is directed to here then once the compiler reaches this statement it returns back to the main stream so here is what will happen uh, have a process um, perhaps I can elongate this a bit so I can return here or return here so here we will have int sum is equal to a plus b which is equal to 5 plus 10 which is equal to 15 that is the process being conducted in this line now the, uh, so this was 20 because of uh, pr uh, the previous recording let me change it to avoid confusion so now this sum this sum here 15 is trapped in this stream now it is trapped in this rectangle in this domain it is inaccessible beyond this line the sum is trapped here why because it is in a different stream the control has shifted from the main stream it has shifted once this method has been invoked the control uh, of the compiler has shifted to this domain here without this statement this sum is trapped in add number which means what main method now has lost access to 15 so if i wish to print 15 this i cannot print it why because it is trapped in this domain or to me to be more precise this scope and i will be designing a, or recording a lecture for scopes uh, soon inshallah before we continue onwards with object instantiation because as I deliberated the matter I felt uh, it is important to discuss scope first and access specifiers before we move on to uh, object instantiation so <clears throat> now that the number is trapped here I wish to liberate it so that the compiler can access it in the mainstream as opposed to this branched stream so what do I do because the control was transferred from the main to the side stream I wish to return the control from this side stream to the mainstream again I have to return it so uh, let us see if I can directional okay, maybe I can try this can I oh yeah I can rotate it uh, yeah there we go so the control has transferred from this stream to this side stream here now I wish to return the control once more to the main method why because every method uh, every execution of a method is present in uh, how do we rotate this every uh, uh, execution of a method is performed in main or in every invocation is performed in main so I cannot have uh, important values outside of main now if I can just uh, for goodness sake how do you rotate these 
Okay, maybe I'll just do this like so and do this. There we go. So now I wish to return the program flow to the main fl uh, stream here. Or I can simply ignore what is performed here, but I would lose access to the sum. So this will not print anything. So if we wish to test it, let us say sout sum. I cannot print it because I do not have access to it. It has not returned to me yet. Okay, so what do we do? We return the sum to form this arrow. So what happened here is like so, actually, to be easier. And then this is carried out like so. Then here is how the return statement connects. So it will connect like so. And this is the return statement. Where is the text box? This is done because of the return statement or the return expression right here. Now that I returned this sum into the main method, the main method has access to it now. So how do I return values from functions let us return back to here so as you can see i return the sum i am returning it to main however because this sum is a variable or has a, or is a value i must assign it or place it into a variable now this 15 is left unassigned why? Because it was assigned here. But remember, since it is returning to main, it requires a different assignment. So what we can do here is the following. Where, uh, from which function is the sum returning from? Add number. So that means this function yields a value after its, its execution, which is the sum. So it is as if I said this function is actually equal to int sum because this value is what is begotten or I should say is be, uh, yeah is begotten from this function add number. So what I will do is I will simply say int and then name a variable is equal to this method because this method is worth a value so what i can do here is i can say int sum and i can reuse the name because the sum here is different from the sum here why because this sum is trapped in this method whereas this sum is trapped in this method since they are in two different methods you can reuse the name which we will discuss this later on inshallah once we tackle the scope lecture i will just drink some water oh my throat is dry okay so we will say add number a b so what does this inform us that this yields the value 15 and once it returns from here to here the compiler will take the value 15 and store it in this variable you do not have to call it sum you can call it c you can call it d you can label the variable however you wish it does not matter but of course, as we mentioned, the identifier should be descriptive. And uh, because if it is descriptive, the person reading your code would uh, understand uh, your logic. Then I can print this value, or rather I can print this value through this value. Why? Because when I return this sum, it returns to here and the value 15 here now this value is now 15 here this value here is 15 why because it returned as 15 it simply needs to be stored uh, into another variable for further manipulation in the main method so if I wish to print this sum I simply print
print the, val the variable I stored it in, like so. Print, there, 15. What if I change uh, the values of A and B? Let us say 10, 10, and not, not to be confused with Tintin, the Belgian character. <laughs> there 20 and so on and so forth okay how about this if this is a value let us see if we can instead of wasting time print uh, assigning the value to a variable let us see if we can print it directly like so so copy paste let us see if we can skip this step. That way we save memory because now we are creating another memory block for C. But here we simply print the value straight away. So let us see if this will work. Again, it works. Why? Because this has now become an int value. Why? Because the return type is int which means that the number that is being returned will be stored in the name of the method. So when you use the name of the method, it will, it will match or the value of the method name will match whatever is being returned from it. So if you wish to put double here, this becomes a, a double variable. If you wish to put a Boolean here, this becomes a Boolean variable and you can uh, code efficiently by avoiding as assigning the return value to a different variable to save memory in the stack. Lastly, to also save, um, uh, to code efficiently, instead of assigning uh, a variable for the sum of these two parameters, re then returning that variable, you can, because the return statement is flexible, we can ignore this and simply write return number one plus number two. And it returns it for you. That way you can be efficient with your code because uh, a method should preferably have between five to ten lines of code. That is the conventional or professional or efficient manner of coding a method. So if you avoid declaring or assigning memory to a local variable within a method and then using that name in the return statement, you can simply use an expression for the return statement. And that also uh, includes if you, for example, are returning a string, you can return the sentence itself instead of a variable. You can say this is the return, just as an example. Of course, you do not need the parameters here because they are not used. And it prints the string for you. So you do not need to return a variable. You can return a literal as well. And we will cover literals in a separate video. I just do not feel they are uh, of utmost important at the moment uh, for this course but inshallah as I mentioned I will try to keep this course as comprehensive as I can with my limited uh, with my limited knowledge and my limited um, experience I hope this video was helpful and beneficial to you all uh, oh actually since we are covering the return statement let us also see Actually, I will leave that to a separate lecture. Enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe, take care, and peace be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Innaka hamidun majid.